We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record Gosh, that's swell. And I have Mitchell Bishop on the line. And he's coming straight from another uh, successful uh, run at the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Uh, he's the uh, one star, not really a one, the one star show, but it, he's the star of the show, let's put it that way, <laughs> of Pete of Goblin. <laughs> and he's here on the studio. Uh, how you doing, Mitchell? Very good. Thank you, Victor. Thanks for having me, uh, having me on. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it's been uh, an amazing run, right? Oh my God, the best. Um, we had uh, sold out shows for the Hollywood Fringe Festival. And now we're going to do a, a four show, four performance engagement at the Ruby Theater where the show was up during the Hollywood Fringe Festival. We had a, oh, we had a sold out uh, encore as well. So we thought, well, we'd do a short run of it. And we'll add some post-show events sort of to entice people during the Halloween season to come out, see theater, stick around for a fun uh, event or two, and then head out to whatever they're going to do around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And, um, yeah, I thought maybe I'd slip in some Hollywood or Holly, Halloween entertainment, you know, Halloween entertainment in Hollywood. Right. Yeah, that's five times fast. <laughs> Halloween, 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 Halloween. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I have a problem with doing that, but I have to practice because I, I'll, I'm, a, I'm writing, as you know, I'm writing my own. Uh, again, it's not a solo show. <laughs> this is funny because we all, mm -hmm. I started saying solo show and then I, st I had to stop myself and I'm like, wait, it's not a solo show. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> but no, going back to Peter Goblins, I, I, I caught okay. it and I was laughing hysterically. Um, uh -huh. didn't even know why, because <laughs> something did not make <laughs> much sense, but I think that was the purpose <laughs> of it, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I Just think to... that, um, you know, I think, uh, my opinion, or at least when I was writing it was, is, is that, um, it, it doesn't feel, it, it, it's interesting characters. And, you know, when you're doing the solo show, you really have to, um, uh, make the and, and this is a plot based sort of story based. It's not about my life. It's a it's a story that I have to sort of. It's uh, not even magical realism. I guess it's magical realism in in some respects. But you know, um, well, I should tell about the show. Is that okay if I I give a little yeah of course quick so people know what we're talking yeah, about. Let's tell us all um, about it. Yeah, so Pit of Goblins. It's about a it's a solo show that I wrote and I perform. It's about a serial killer who um, makes a deal with a pit of goblins that he sees in the woods uh, to mm -hmm. feed them bodies every month. Um, in, mm -hmm. in exchange, they will magically protect him from ever getting caught. Now, the problem is, mm -hmm. is that he is a serial killer, and he's lacking on it, slacking on his serial killer duties while he's trying to feed this insatiable pit of goblins more and more bodies every month. And, um, you know, it starts to affect his, his personal life. And, um, and then right. there's a sheriff who um, is, yeah, right. <laughs> and then there's a sheriff um, who's out looking for him or, or looking for the person who's making all these people disappear in the town. Mm -hmm. So it's a good, it's good. It's, and it's rife with comedy. You know, I come from a comedy background mostly, but I'm a really, really big horror movie fan. And, and um, also I believe in making um, that horror is sort of um, the subconscious way of working through issues and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think we've had the conversation, you and I, Victor, about um, what the mm -hmm. show is like really about for me. But I also never mm -hmm. really talk about that because um, no, I, didn't. I think the show is about uh, something else for everybody. I, I was surprised to hear that last time. I was like, I had never heard you say that. And I think that was, uh, yeah, well, you know. And, and, mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, you know, it's funny because m- most people, they don't say, well, what does the show mean to you, you know? They'll just say, what's the show mm-hmm. about? And, you know, I think, um, I think to be compelled to write anything, you really have to have a story inside of you that you want to tell, whether it be mm-hmm. something that's ultimately personal or something that you're very inspired by or something that you just mm-hmm. feel like you need to say, you know? And so I love the right. medium of, of doing solo shows and, and the challenge of doing a horror movie or horror play about something that really was affecting me at the time um, was important to me. And then once you do it, you're like, well, this really takes on a life of its own and it becomes more of the audience's um, piece than mine, you know? So when people came up to me and said, well, I thought as this, then I would say, yes, you're right. You know, I mean, I, I didn't intend that, but I, I think that that's perfectly, uh, I mean, I don't even say that part, yeah. but I, you know, even if I didn't intend it, I say, well, yeah, that's, that's great. That's amazing. You know, and, and I can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hate to, I hate to put my mm-hmm. version out there that was in my head because it's so different than what the play is. Um, oh, and I don't okay. ever want to clap people thinking, but we were having that conversation one night. And when I told you, yeah, you were kind of blown away. You're like, wow, I didn't even think that that's what it would be about. Mm-hmm. But. Right. But, uh, it's interesting. So we'll it's leave, we'll leave, it, we'll leave it up like to the, the we'll leave it to the interpretation of the of the beholder, I guess, right? That's what you want yeah, them to do. 100%, yeah. You want them to go see yeah. it, have fun, and then right. discuss it among yourselves, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like coffee yeah, and talk. I love hearing interpretations <laughs> of it. <laughs> but you know, people um, mm-hmm. it's theirs ultimately when I when I, uh, an audience is really the the one who holds the power. In, in any kind of, mm-hmm. um, I think, artistic endeavor once the artist has sort of put it out there. So, yeah. um, Well, yeah, my, my impression of it, now that, now that you, you said that, so you're not going to reveal what, what inspired you, which is fine. I, I respect that. <laughs> <clears throat> But my impression of it was basically how we're consumed with, um, I guess we're, you know, we have this... Uh, darker side and we're consumed by it um and then mm-hmm. your feet the feeding of the uh uh the feeding of the peel of the goblins it's interesting because uh i think that's actually facebook <laughs> ah oh i love that yeah 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 because <laughs> <laughs> they so love funny. drama don't they they just love drama and i've been i've been through it well i've been through it a few times but uh as of lately yeah. i've been on uh, on the social media, um, anyways, uh, battle with people that I are quote unquote <laughs> oh, friends no. of mine. And they just, they just oh, love no. me. They just love me, you know? <laughs> yeah. They just love drama. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm yeah. not about to discuss this with you anymore. Like I, I already said my, my piece and you say yours and, and we disagree and that's fine. But dude, like don't call me names and don't, you know what I mean? So, And yeah, it's, it's an endless, endless pit of goblins. It's like an endless pit. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. stop. <laughs> yeah, and, it, <laughs> and and the idea of the goblins is that they feed and they feed and they feed and they're never satiated. They never, they yeah. never will be satisfied, no matter where they never. go or what they do or or what situation they're in. And that really applies to a lot of things in this world right now. Yeah. Um, in my the little, opinion, again, the little narcissists. <laughs> yeah, 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 and they and they um and there is a moment in the there's a moment in the play where that is addressed for a moment, but then it sort of you know again I don't want I didn't want to give I didn't want it to be too literal because I feel like I yeah. didn't want to make some kind of statement in that sense. It wasn't about that, it, and I also think that like when you're doing horror too, instead of editorializing on the horror, I think sometimes the horror just has to happen. And the audience is left with that feeling of like, well, what did I just see? Or what, it, what I have to come up with the answers, you know? So I really appreciate right. your interpretation of it because it's pretty accurate. I mean, it's, it's totally accurate for the play, you know, it's completely <laughs> accurate <laughs> and you're right. And you're and feeling I'm, it I'm right now, just... so I'm sure. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it's funny because like, I, you had this drama with these people online and then you probably hit me up and were like, Hey, you want to do the, you want to do the, uh, the podcast again? 
because uh, now I'm. Really I got it. Into your show. I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> I seen it. Well, started what like two months ago, and I just got it like right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you felt it in <laughs> the power. Yeah, it's like that joke. <laughs> no, but actually, well, yeah, know, I do. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I was well, just going to say yeah. that. Uh, well, you were going to say it first, so go ahead. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you go, you go, go. <laughs> okay, well, don't lose your train of thought. Anyways, uh, I won't. No, it's it's a great show. I was just gonna say it's a great show. It's you have a way of portraying characters that are so um, um, multi-dimensional. They're not just one-dimension characters, and they're so uh, funny oh, and uh, and troubled and and tortured and. And they're just hilarious. Some of them are just hilarious. Like the radio <laughs> host was was funny. Um, yeah, I, I, thank I you. don't remember much of it because I was probably drinking that day, and <laughs> I'll have to see it again. <laughs> that's an appropriate. That's an appropriate uh, uh, atmosphere to be in. I think having a drink or two is it's not bad. Maybe a little smoke. It's legal in the state, so you know. There you um, go. Yeah, it's. I there are three characters. Per, um, pretty much in the, in the entire play. And they, um, uh, and they all share their opinions on, on this thing. It's, it, they're all part of a town, a community, and the way they deal with it is, is different. And that's one element to, to the thing. Yeah. There's a radio host. that's sort of like an Alex Smith character, sorry, Alex Jones. And, um, okay. he's got oh, like yeah. a conservative radio. Oh, okay. That's one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you about oh about the character work. Yeah, you know, I I try to uh, I mean in the writing and stuff, and when I'm improvising these things and and then putting them down on paper, um, I really try to like um, treat these characters like real people, even if I even if I'm judging mm -hmm. them as a writer, as a performer, mm -hmm. and also as someone who would live in that body. Um, it's it's fun, it's more fun to me to have no judgment. Sometimes I will crack myself up. Just by uh, the way I write is is through a voice um, like a microphone, and I talk into a recorder, mm. and then I write it. Okay. So uh, sometimes I'll just crack myself up about how like stupid a character will be, um, but never judging him, but just being like, "That's so funny because it's exactly what this person would do," and it's funny uh -huh. to me, Mitchell Bishop, looking on the outside. So I think it will work, you know. And and those yeah. kind of little moments when they click, they you can really feel them. It's like a like something going into gear, and um, mm -hmm. it usually can bring you to the next step. So it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun writing characters and then being able to play them, and and have them be stupid or funny or say things that are totally outrageous, uh, mm -hmm. but have them ring true to people. You know, and that's kind of like mm -hmm. the goal, I think. I'm I'm really happy to hear that you, you mm. felt that way about the characters. Right. Well, and the, your writing process is way different than mine, but um, mm -hmm. I actually have the same, I have, I've had the same situations where I write something down and then I start laughing. I'm like, who said that? I did? <laughs> like, that was just, yeah, just came yeah, out yeah. of me? Wow, okay. Karma's a witch. Yeah. But, yeah, sure is. <laughs> you know, you know like, stuff like, like that, I yeah, this person is, like, so different from me. And when I'm able to step out, I think, oh, my God, that's hilarious. I, I would never say that, but this person would. And, and <laughs> when you get enough <laughs> right? of those, you're like, wow, this feels like a real person to me. You know, Like, I know this guy, you know. Um, yeah, right, right. Uh, I, did a, I did a play last year, and there was a character, and she was an old woman, and she was – she she's an actress. She takes commercial work very seriously. And anyway, she passes out. She wakes up at a hospital and her lover is standing over her and he says, they got what they needed. And my, my line was afterwards of the greatest words an actor can ever hear. They got what they needed. And it used to get such a big <laughs> laugh because, because no one on set, you know, act, actors know, that when you're doing this kind of work, no one ever goes, that was perfect. That was great. They always go, yeah, we got what we needed. Like, it's so cynical, you know? And she's so happy mm -hmm. that they just got what they needed. Like, they couldn't even say, you're the best. You did it. We got it, you know? They said, we got what we needed. <laughs> like, so happy. 
And I just thought that yeah. juxtaposition was so funny, you know. Um, not to toot my own horn, you're, but I mean, you're you know, giving a I compliment. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> they're not giving a compliment, but she takes it as a compliment. No. And I just thought, that's really what a life of an actor is. It's like no validation, even when you do well, no validation. Yeah. And, and it worked. And so I just thought, uh, again, I'm not tooting my own horn. I, 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 I see this stuff as like, you know, I mean, that's in the past. And I'm not like, I'm not saying how great or right I am. I'm saying just like how uh, no, you are. those things can stick out you and, and, they, and they can say like, they'll pop out at you and go, oh my God, that works. That's what that person is all about. Right. Um, oh, I wanted to mention... <laughs> actually, point. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Mention it. Mention I, it. I, I was going to change topics, so if you want to keep riffing on this, then don't let's... No, uh, no, no. Go ahead. Change it. I, I just want to... Remember what I say. say I want... <laughs> <laughs> it's just my show. That's I all. Just... It's just mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's... <laughs> Hi, welcome to Italiano Productions. This is Mitchell Bishop's podcast. Yeah, <laughs> and it's really Mitchell sticking over, so that's okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to mention uh, that after the shows, the on October 17th through the 20th, um, we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, Sunday night. Thursday, Friday, Saturday are all 8 p.m. shows. Sunday night is a 5 p.m. show. You get tickets at pitofgoblins.com. Now, what we do after the show is we're going to do a post-show event. After Thursday's show, it's going to be a serial killer game show. Uh, after mm. Friday's show, it's going to be a um, serial killer trivia night. So it's going to be like break up into mm. groups of one to four. You're going to do like a pub quiz trivia night, uh, five rounds, mm. and then the group that wins will get a grand prize. Third night, mm, Saturday like night, is the best, in my opinion, and that's the serial killer costume contest. What I'm trying to do is get people mm. dressed up as serial killers to be in the audience. And then after the show, wow. we're going to bring them up on stage and we're going to do a whole costume contest of, like, meeting the serial killers, <laughs> a dance competition, and then we're going to give a grand prize out for that. To me, that's okay. going to be a big packed house for that. That's going to be so fun. If I walk out on stage and see all these people dressed as, like, Serial killers, I will be completely just blown away. I, I may stop what I'm yeah. doing in the middle of the show and just be like, wow. <laughs> and then Sunday, this is like a real treat. I figure we do something that was a little bit more uh, matinee, uh, which is mm. a 5 p.m. show. And then after that, we're going to do a beef jerky tutorial. So I also make beef jerky. I eat beef jerky in the show. But I figure <laughs> what I'll do is, is give everybody a worksheet on how they can make beef jerky at home. Try it out at home. Try to make mm -hmm. it out on, on your own. And then we'll go through step by step how to do it uh, with pictures mm -hmm. and, and visual aids. And then, um, yeah, and then I'll send you on your way to make um, mm -hmm. the best beef jerky you've ever had, which is the stuff you've made in your own oven. Mm -hmm. So I just okay. want to make those announcements because... Uh, is, there, is there anything anything for vege vegetarians or vegans? Uh, no, no. Unfortunately, not for the beef jerky uh, <laughs> tutorial. I haven't made. I haven't made He's not a jerky beef yet. Plant based two, two uh, I beef jerky. <laughs> yeah. I get, I'll, I'll hook up with uh, Impossible uh, Burgers to see if we can get that going. Yeah, there you go. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if they had it can be done. jerky and it was like nice and real right. leathery and all that? I can't imagine. Right. But you well, know, actually, truthfully, you, you, you never could know. do vegetables. Yeah, I mean, this method, too, will work with, like, vegetables and stuff like that. I just don't know. C cook times are different, mm. and uh, heat times are different. So the thing I'm going <laughs> to give is for beef only, but, you know, it, it, okay. then you can do your own research and use it as a jumping-off point. No, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, mean, I love beef. So I'm, yeah, I'm right. not a everybody loves beef. I'm just saying. <laughs> for the yeah, pita, yeah, everyone loves beef, but... Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's maybe that's not the show you want to go. <laughs> maybe you go to the serial killer costume contest. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You pick a Monday, I mean, Friday, Thursday, or Saturday night, but don't go to the beef jerky. If you yeah, don't, don't go jerky. to the, sun, the beef jerky one. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I like the uh, trivia night. Uh, I'm not into the costumes, but I'm, I, I like the trivia. Right. So I might go to the trivia The trivia night. night you know, actually, um, I, I, help, I had help uh, with 
somebody who wrote the questions and she's uh, uh, like a game show producer, you know, and she, her and I yeah. used to run a pub quiz in um, New York years and years ago. So I hit her up and I said, mm-hmm. Hey, do you want to help write some questions for this thing? And she was, she jumped right on it and she just, yeah. she just was finishing all up. We were going back and forth and she goes, I'm going to take a break on this because it's really hard to research this stuff, you know? And I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that, you know, how, like, she'd have to go and look at the crimes and all that stuff to get, like, good questions and all that. So, oh, um, okay. kudos to her. I want to give her a shout oh, out wow. to Lauren Billings in New York City. And she, she, she's come up with the question. She's an absolute pro. So, so, so uh, she's taking it seriously re- then. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not a joke. I mean, it's. It's not a joke in the sense of it's going to be fun, but it's a legit pub quiz. Like it's not going to be, oh. it's not going to be a cakewalk. It's going to be serial killer mm. questions. Anybody who's like really boned up on serial killer, I would say get a friend, bring a friend mm-hmm. who's into serial killers that night because they could be your pub quiz, uh, co- you know, your, your, yeah, your, in your uh, group. How's the audience? Your partner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, the, the ringer. Oh, wow. <laughs> Never <hear it>. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> well, I'm more I'm more of a movie trivia guy, uh, not not a crime oh, yeah. kind of guy. But that's yeah, yeah. that's a different story. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah. So these tickets are you you said tickets are available through pitofgoblins.com, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, you can just go on pitofgoblins.com. They're actually being sold through Brown Paper Tickets. So if you go on Brown Paper Tickets oh. and and uh, look up. Um, pit of goblins I think it'll come up but if you go to the website that'll give you all the information that'll give you the information about the uh, events coming up about the show there's a trailer um, at the bottom of the website so oh, yeah. the websites we're Hilarious. checking out and yeah and and uh, the ticket um, line you know where you can click for the tickets is right there so I would love it if okay. we could get people out I'd love for people to see the show I really believe in it I love doing it. I think other people have really connected with it, so that's good. We got a lot of fun events afterwards, yeah. so I'm very pleased with how this yeah, turned out. I'm, and, like a lot uh, of I'll, fun, do actually. Out, I'll do a little shout out too to some people who uh, some of the prizes we have for the post show events, mm-hmm. like the game show, the trivia night, and the costume contest are from. Uh, mm-hmm. We got Dapper Cadaver, which is a prop shop up in the valley. We got Mystic Museum which is doing a 3D Evil Dead um, exhibit. We've got free tickets to that. Museum of Death mm. has contributed um, to, mm. to the show of course. Uh, with some free tickets. <laughs> so, um, uh, oh, and uh, Memento Mor- Moray. Moray. Moment- Am I saying that right? Memento Moray? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Memento Moray. <laughs> very, very okay. awesome store. Um, in Hollywood, mm-hmm. you know, they sell like the craziest stuff, you know, like, like bat, uh, uh, skeletons and like all that cool shit. It's, it's like one of those stores you go in, mm-hmm. but you, um, you, you know, you like, you could search around for like an hour and be like, oh man, I, if I had a million bucks, I'd buy all this stuff. Well, they're, they're giving us a gift right. certificate and I won't say how much for how much, but it's pretty good. Mm. So we're coming hey. down to win some prizes, see a great show. It's a fun night. And then you'll be I out. Think you're- out on the town by ten I o'clock. Think Saturday, so. I, I think that that night will be sold out just by your, by what you're saying. Everybody will be like, "Ooh, you, you, dude, you got to go to the Friday dude. one. They're gonna get prizes." <laughs> yeah, there's prizes. The prizes at Thursday, uh, Friday, and Saturday shows. So, yeah, yeah I'm, trying to, I'm dirty, trying to give them twenty bucks too. That's, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, so try to you, make you it fun. Try to make it great, though. Hey, you, if you, ha- I always say to people when I pass out the fires, I say, you could, you may hate the show, but at least you'll have fun in the last half of the night. <laughs> you can, you can come to the <laughs> performance. I say, if you hate the show, at least the oh, night no. will end up fun because you'll, you'll do a, <laughs> a trivia night or a costume yeah. contest, something like that. Yeah. No, kidding aside, actually, yeah. this is, uh, this was a really fun show to see. Um, Thank you. It may not be for everybody, but for those that have a twisted. Um, twisted um, sense of humor um, because you, <laughs> you know if you don't have sense of humor <laughs> then you're not gonna get it. Uh, it's not a <laughs> you know serious serial uh, killer show, but anyways you you do have to see it and see it for yourself. I'm not gonna say anymore because 
Uh, I'm going to yeah, sound like, like I'm kissing your butt. Like com- <laughs> have you, I appreciate it. Kiss away. If you like horror or you like <laughs> comedy, I think, um, I think this is a good – and solo theater. You know, if you're a theater person, I think this is different than a lot of shows that you might go see, certainly solo shows. So um, it's, I think it's worth checking out. Of course, I'm saying that because I'm promoting the show, but um, – I, I usually generally am a lot more tre- trepidatious. I think if you hear my interview with you three months ago uh, mm, about the show, yeah. I'm probably a lot more timid than I am about it now. And it's only because people have told me for, you know, many audiences that it is good and that they do connect with it. And so, and I've made little changes right. to that, that I felt were more appropriate for the show. So I think that it's, um, I think that it's come together really nicely and I'm very, very proud of it. And I'm, cool. Excited to share it with a, a different audience than than Fringe. Of course, I want Fringe people to come, but I, you know, I, I'd like to see some people who don't have an association with me come and see this and see their reactions and see how they feel about it at the end. And um, right. yeah, I'm just excited. I'm excited to put it up again too. I got to say, it's a fun show to to perform. <clears throat> right, right. So, what's next after Peter Goblin? Do you have any? Because I, I I attended one of your uh, workshops too, and it was a it was a really mm-hmm. good uh, workshop that we had. Um, you know, uh, so anything anything Thank coming you. out coming down the pipe after that, or are you still you're probably into the yeah. Peter Goblins universe right now. I'm, so. I'm, I'm still uh, I'm still in Peter Goblins world. I've got a really busy October with other projects uh, and November as well. But I'm really hoping in December I can start. Um, sitting down and pick up there's another solo show that I want to do, but I don't know if I'll get to it next year. And my thought is this, if Mm -hmm. I write something very small first and then Mm -hmm. in two, and then take the the time to write this other one for in two years, just so I can stay in practice. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking maybe I'll do a little buffer fun project. That's not, Mm -hmm. not too uh, crazy, not too ambitious. I should say, um, but right. is, is crazy like this, then, then it, it, maybe it'll afford me the time to actually take two years and write a solo show. Cause I've written one last year and I wrote one this year. And certainly this one is more my um, baby, but uh, I don't want right. to, I don't want to try to keep, I want to continue to keep writing stuff and getting on stage with it. I don't want to get, uh, mm-hmm. um, I don't want to get, uh, what do you call it? Out of practice, but I also yeah. don't want to put the pressure of trying to, trying to make something that I love and that's brilliant that I can live with in one year, you know? So yeah. I, the, well, the one thing I will say about doing this kind of work is that it really does inspire you to write more and more and more. And, um, and so uh, I want to keep that portion of it up, you know? Yeah. No, actually it does uh, inspire me to, it has inspired me to, go from the direct directorial chair to next mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing the acting. And I, oh, yeah. along this time, I, I, I'm resistant. I'm resistant. And like, you have no idea. I'm still thinking of casting my own part. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you'd be so yeah, good, Victor. You're, you'd be so good. You know that. I hope so. And I, there's yeah, nothing more satisfying really... than telling your own story. You know, your yeah. own thing that you get to write and, and tell your own thing. I got to grab my dog. My dog. Yeah. <laughs> my dog is a well, somebody's angry uh, back there. Carrier. <laughs> she, uh, she, she goes crazy. I yeah, know. She's, um, she's just a small little terrier, but she, she's got a vicious bark. It's really funny. Hey, relax. Yeah. relax. It's okay. Well, welcome to the show. You know what's her name? Or what's, what's her name is like? Grandma. Grandma, of grandma? course, grandma's gonna be a Grandma, upset. say hi. You want to say hi, grandma? Hi, grandma. Quiet. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there she's in a little. Gr- she had a little oh, there grumble. you go. Hi, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> grandma don't like to be interrupted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she, uh, she hears the mailwoman. I think it's <laughs> when every time she hears the door of the mailwoman, she goes ballistic. But she's oh, otherwise of a really sweet little girl. I have to hold her in my arms right okay. now. <laughs> she is not in the show, um, but she would be a perfect addition to the show. No. Yeah, why not? I would, Yeah, why not? Um, I, don't know. I, would, <laughs> I wish I could tra- train my dog to be on stage. That would be amazing. 
Then I'd really never hey, leave. That would be another it. show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you have an excuse to take her out to uh, Hollywood, right? <laughs> and for a right, walk. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he is a anyhow, she is. I can see. She's very committed to her part of being growly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> grandma. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, people, uh, this is again uh, Peter Goblins. So we're back with Peter Goblins once again. It's going to be at the comp. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I mentioned we mentioned it, but it's going to be at the Ruby Theater also at the Complex, right? Ruby Theater at the Complex, October seventeenth to the twentieth. Eight p.m. shows Thursday, okay. Friday, Saturday. Sunday's a five p.m. show, and then stick around for the post show events. Serial Killer Game Show, Serial Killer Trivia yeah. Night, Serial Killer Costume Contest, Beef Jerky Tutorial. Beef Jerky Tutorial, and then followed by Vegan vegan Beef Tutorial, right, right. too. If, yeah. if, I, if I sell out the audience, <laughs> if I sell out all the audiences, I'll do another show, and at the end of that one, I'll do a Vegan Beef Jerky. I'll learn there how to do be, be, uh, Vegan Beef Jerky, and I'll teach the audience the <laughs> Vegan Beef Jerky. <laughs> okay. How do you? Uh, yeah. So let me ask you just one question about the beef jerky because I I had sure. beef jerky uh, before and I've had it from this uh, friend of mine. Her name is Christine. Now her husband mm-hmm. does it. Her hus- her husband's name is Javi. Uh, not a real, mm-hmm. not his real name, but Javi makes the best <laughs> beef jerky. And and he told me one time he's like, yeah, you get this. Um, what did he say? Liquid, liquid smoke. And I'm like, wait a minute. Hold liquid on. smoke, yeah. You said liquid, yeah. liquid smoke? What is that? Yeah. He's like, oh, no, you can, it, you can like get a, it you um, know, from the store. And I'm like, that's like, I never heard that before. Before he said that, yeah, I'm like, it's like a, that doesn't exist. It's like, it's like a flavoring. It's called liquid uh, smoke. Um, it's like hickory flavoring. I'd use the one that's hickory flavoring. There's another one. I can't remember what it is. It's like, you know, savory stuff. And it's got like that. It's got like that. I don't really know, to be honest with you. I put it in the stuff. The peppery. And taste it, but I can't, yeah, I can't yeah. really describe it. Cause I've never had it just on its own as, you know what I mean? It, it's always been in the mixture. And I definitely, when I tried yeah. beef jerky without it, it didn't, um, you couldn't you or the, when I tried the, like the cowboy jerky, the original stuff without it, mm. you could definitely taste mm. the difference. So when I put it in, I was like, oh, yeah. I I don't know if I could really describe it. It's funny that you say that because mm. that's exactly how I felt when I bought my first bottle. I was like, what the hell is liquid smoke? But yeah, it's, <laughs> you put it on meat and it basically get. I think it gives yeah. that like uh, smoky taste flavoring to Barbecue, it. You know, it's like it right. Of, yeah, you know, like there's a there's a difference between something that's made even in your broiler and something that's made over coals, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, you know, and and the other thing with beef jerky is that you really have to flavor the shit out of it because um, mm. you can make something that tastes good when you're eating beef. Like if I had an au jus and it tastes good with beef, it's one thing. But if I mm. try to mimic that in beef jerky, it'll just taste bland. So you really have to like pepper the shit out of something or. You know, like there's a mm. lot of ingredients in beef jerky because it's also got to preserve it. You know, all the salt is preserving the preserving the, mm. the beef, and then it, when it dries right. out, you know, as long as there's no water, I mean, the thing can <clears throat> you can eat that three months down the road. I mean, of, you know, speaking jerky. of uh, speaking of beef jerky uh, in uh, yeah. in Peru, they actually have beef jerky, but they make them out of uh, uh, lion seals. Ooh, really? Yeah, for real. Wow. I mean, I've, and I've had it, and you know they they hang they hang it up to dry. It's really scary. Weird. I, what I'm telling you right now is really you should not try this at home. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not gonna. Don't, I'm after, not gonna Google yeah. it either. <laughs> I can already tell if I Google it. I'm being for rude awakening. It's called buchame. You know, it's interesting. It's called, they have a name for it. It's called buchame, and then they they you huh. actually uh, you actually have it with um, lima beans. And then you have it with avocado, oh. and it's, it tastes good, but it's illegal and it's uh, immoral. Yeah, yeah. And it has like yeah, yeah all of that. <laughs> well, it's interesting <laughs> because I would think that something like that's very fatty, and and the whole trick of beef jerky is to really like get rid of all the fat because that'll make your jerky rancid. But this sounds like a um, more of like a dish 
than like something you would like put in a sack and take yeah. hiking or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah obviously. That, it sounds, uh, sounds pretty horrible. Yeah. It <laughs> I didn't sound tasty, I mean, but kind of horrible. And when I was growing up, I didn't I didn't think I was doing anything wrong by eating it, but when I learned what it was, and then I, I saw one being killed in front of my eyes, I was like, oh, this God. is not cool whatsoever, and this is kind of like a, a killer on the beach kind of scene, and I was traumatized, yeah. and it was all of that, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you? I will are never you full, forget are it. You, are you vegan or are you vegetarian? Um, I should be a vegan or after an, watching that. I, I should totally yeah. be a vegan because. But no, <laughs> uh, I'm cutting down on my. I uh, know, I'm cutting down on my meat uh, consumption. Okay, um, you just you eat meat, but you don't reasons. really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's of good. course. I eat bacon, but yeah, I I don't I'm not <laughs> you know, I'm not doing it for religious reasons or for whatever. No, I'm just uh, it's for health reasons and oh, yeah. I, no, actually uh, beefless uh, uh, what do you call it Beyond Meat or what's the other one? They're great. The other brand. They're great. Impossible. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Impossible. They're really good. Burgers. Yeah, there you go. Uh, they are. And it tastes like, like it's like a real thing. So. Like here is good for the environment and all that. So, but that's not why I'm doing it. <laughs> but yeah, I'll I love how our conversation <laughs> about a uh, about my play about a serial killer talks about like the moral implications of vegan vegetarianism and meat eaters <laughs> and the health. Right. Like, is it funny? These are the kind of conversations you're going to have when you come and see the show. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because um, Matt Ritchie were, and I were talking about Romeo and Juliet, and for some odd mm-hmm. reason, he turned to Adele. <laughs> no reason. <Yeah. laughs> you have to listen to it, but it, it makes no sense when you look at that. You're like, why? Did, how did they go from Romeo, from you know Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet, all the way to Adele, and uh, not only Adele but uh, Holland Oates. So. <laughs> it's the most never, frustrating know, podcast right? to be on because you're you're trying to promote something and you always end up talking about something <laughs> completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I, I did not want to promote Adele. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, right, right. my show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy talked you great about Adele. I can't remember what he was promoting, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So whoever yeah. has been listening to us thus far. This show is not about yeah. beef jerky or Beyond Meat or, or Impossible right. Burgers or Buchami. Or, or Victor's it's about veget- of vegetarianism Bill. or it's veganism. <laughs> it's about Pit of Goblins. Right. Pit of Goblins. Dot com, yeah. October 17th to the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we should wrap that up, right? <laughs> Before we start talking about yeah, yeah. <laughs> unrelated <laughs> to it. <laughs> well, uh, Mucho has been uh, another fun show for me. <laughs> I yeah, don't know about definitely. you guys. But thank you. Thank you so much for having me on again. Yeah, who cares? This is it's fun for us. <laughs> if people listen yeah, to it, yeah. you know, that's great. If they don't, whatever. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, they should listen to it, but if they don't listen to it, oh well. Go to Facebook. Hey, you know what? We, we, we back-ended all the really funny stuff, so that, that, the, the people yeah. who stick with it, they're really going to get a treat, you know? <laughs> There you go. They may get a prize yeah. if, they, if they listen to this to us thus far. Yeah. And they mention jerky okay. or they mention buchame in your show. I'll give them a prize. Right. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> well, thank you so All much, right, Victor. Mitchell. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Here we take it out with uh, EDNC.com, and did you? We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record button.
see that coming. 